Extreme honors to Prophet Noble Drew Ali and all the active Moors. You better stay active. <laughs> Here on Partner Interjection, we dig up information to divulge to the people and the upliftment of fallen humanity. I want to give a shout out to my good brother up top. <laughs> who I had the pleasure of finally meeting and greeting yesterday here in the so-called District of Columbia Territory, which we know as the Anacostian Territory. My brother Cujo Adul L. And I want to say again, thank you, brother. I love you. I love you. I love you, bro. If it wasn't for you, it wouldn't be no part in the interjection show. So I want to give shout outs to my brother again, Cujo Otto L in Canaan land, Canaan land Moors. And a big shout out to my brother Setin Ra from in Philadelphia territory, because <laughs> that's an awesome brother, too. I love you, bro. Can't wait to get you on the show, Set. And um, all the people that traveled to the District of Columbia territory and was here yesterday to take on the festivities of the Moorish province. <laughs> today we have a great show for you today because I was blessed. And I'll give a shout out to my big bro Loon Bay <laughs> out Laurel. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, actually, him and his mate, uh, Sister Nalia Bay, uh, she blessed me blissed me because we don't bless but she blessed me with a jewel correcting the position of the irs in social security contribution tax by sister anna e l and i want to thank you again sister nalia bay now i'm in sister tanisha but we know you as sister nalia bay <coughs> party <coughs> So, you know how we do it. Let's get right to it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Correcting the position of the IRS. Enforcing the American Constitution obligation of Moors. Sister Anna Ede. There has been a lot written and spoken about the Internal Revenue Services according to Corporation. Oh, pardon me. Let me get that right. There has been a lot written and spoken about the Eternal Revenue Service Accounting Corporation. This treatise is brought forth from a perspective of positive law. First and foremost, we as the people, end quote, must know that all governments are created to preserve, protect, and secure the rights of the people specifically the birthrights of the people and their inheritance, which cannot be bought, sold, or transferred. Those people are the Moors of Madrid, al Ica, America. They are the heirs apparent. Other people referenced herein are foreigners who are alien to the land of Madrid, America, Morocco, the most extreme West, they benefit by way of the heirs, Moors, as they have privileges through and by the Moors via the American Constitution, which secures the, those privileges. 
However, the heirs' birth rights are first and foremost protected and secured in the Constitution. The Constitution is an eloquent document based in ancient principles of government and designed to protect the heirs of the land, the rights of the people, and the privileges of the foreigners. The above is the first principle. All employees, officers, agents, contractors, and agencies are the public servant, trustee of the people. It is their obligation pursuant to the American Constitution, Article 5, that binds them to their oath of office to protect and preserve the people and their rights. Pardon the interjection. It's a Constitution, Article V1. I'm not Roman, so there's Roman numerals, and there you go. And we continue. The above is the second principle. Whenever the public servant trustee violates their oath of office and thereby endangers the people, wars against the people, or infringes in any way on the birthrights of the people, it is an act of treason. The punishment for treason to this day is death. The above is the third principle. With the above principles firmly in mind, let's take a close look at the private foreign European for-profit Eternal Revenue Services Accounting Corporation. In researching the said corporation, you will find that it is not an agency of the United States Republic Federal Government as affirmed in the following case. Diversified Metal Products Inc. versus t Bow Company Trust, Eternal Revenue Services, and Steve Morgan, where the United States Attorney General Betty H. Richardson denies that the Eternal Revenue Services is an agency of the United States government. Still, you must request, demand their delegation of authority. As an entity of the government, functioning as a private contractor for profit, it must have a charter, i.e. delegation of authority, in order to engage in business. And if you study business a little, you will find that all businesses must have an indemnity insurance in order to operate in any business capacity. Note, all businesses must have an indemnity insurance prior to the start of their business in order to engage in any business activity. The following analogy promotes clarity. In order for a doctor to first have a practice, he must have malpractice insurance. Without malpractice insurance, he cannot operate as a practicing oh, pardon me, practicing physician. If the doctor in any way injures the people, one of his patients, the patients can write a complaint and or sue the doctor in court for damages. Keep in mind, every time the doctor gets a written complaint or is sued, his malpractice insurance will go up. If the doctor receives too many written complaints or is sued too often, his malpractice insurance would be too high to maintain. At this point, the doctor would do one of three things. One, join a practice. At such time, that practice's insurance may increase. Join a hospital or as a result, the hospital malpractice insurance may increase or three, retire and or no longer practice, cease to exist. The same process explained above as a doctor in a practicing business is the exact same process that applies to all businesses and corporations, including alleged government agencies, which are nothing more than for-profit European private corporations who have usurped the government seat unlawfully. One major key to always keep in mind, if you go into any alleged government agency and they demand slash extort any fees from you, that is a private, foreign, European for-profit corporation posing as a government agency. Remember, all government agents are compensated via taxes collected. Therefore, one of the questions one must ask is, where do the extorted fees go? This is what is called kickbacks, slush funds, in short, prima facie evidence of extortion. How do you prove the government agency is lawfully authorized to exist? Demand as the people the a delegation of authority. 
This provides the people with exactly what can and cannot be done. It is that simple. If any agency states that they do not have one or it doesn't exist, they have just affirmed that they are functioning outside the authority of lawful government. In short, they are racketeering. If they allege to be public servants, trustees, that would be called treason. No man or woman in this country is so high that he is above the law. No officer of the law may set the law at differences with impunity. Impunity, pardon me, impunity. All the officers of the government from the highest to the lowest are creatures of the law and are bound to obey it. Butts versus Economo, E-C-O-N-O-M-O-U, 438 U.S. 478, 1978, United States versus Lee, 106, U.S. at 221, S.C.T. at 261, 1882. The Eternal Revenue Services Accounting Corporation. Remember, everything lawful government does, by definition, is supposed to be and is all about securing the birthrights of the people. Therefore, all statutes, statutes at large, codes, ordinances, apply only to public servants, trustees, and corporations. All corporations inclusive of federal and state government corporations slash agencies and corporations. <laughs> When you research, review, and or study the Eternal Revenue Codes, they apply to public servants, trustees, and corporations only. If you study, 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 you will find that this is exactly what they affirm. As always, the key to this degree is study. It is not the function of our government to keep the citizens from falling into error. It is the function of the citizen to keep the government from falling into error. American Communications Association versus Dodds, D-O-U-D-S, 339 U.S., 382, 442, 1950. Public officers are merely the agents of the public, whose powers and authority are defined and limited by law. Any act without the scope of the authority so defined does not bind the principle, and all persons dealing with such agents are charged with knowledge of the extent of their authority. Continental Casualty Company versus United States, 113 F 2D 284 286, 5th Circuit, 1940. Every man is independent of all laws, except those prescribed by nature. He is not bound by any institution formed by his fellow man without his consent. Cruden versus Neal. Scroer versus Rhodes. That's S-C-H-E-U-E-R versus Rhodes. Note, by law, a judge is a state officer. The judge then acts not as a judge, but as a private individual in his person. When a judge acts as a trespasser of the law, when a judge does not follow the law, the judge loses subject matter jurisdiction, and the judge's orders are not violable. I mean, pardon me, are not voidable, but void and of no legal force or effort. Pardon me, effect. The U.S. Supreme Court stated that when a state officer acts under a state law in a manner violative of the federal constitution, he comes into conflict with the superior authority of that constitution. And he is in that case stripped of his official or representative character and is subjected in his person to the consequences of his individual conduct. The state has no power to impart to him any immunity from responsibility to the supreme authority of the United States. Basso versus UPL, Brook versus Yawkey, that's Y A W K E Y, Elliot versus Pyrostol, P I E R S O L. Under federal law, which is applicable to all states, the United States Supreme Court stated, 
that if a court is without authority, its judgments and orders are regarded as nullities. They are not voidable, but simply void, and from no bar to a recovery sought. Pardon me, no form. And from no bar to a recovery sought, even prior to a reversal in opposition to them. They constitute no jurisdiction, and all persons concerned in executing such judgments or sentences are considered in law as trespassers. Louisville and NR Company versus Motley, M O T T L E Y, Mac versus United States. Justice Antoni Scal Scalia, oh wow, pardon the interjection. Uh, to 0072719097 Justice Antony Scalia uh pardon the interjection interjection pardon me um Justice Antony Scalia uh recently passed away and I want to give uh, condolences to his family uh and we continue the federal government may neither issue directives requiring the states to address particular problems nor command the state's officers or those of their political subdivisions to administer or enforce a federal regulatory program. It matters not whether policy making is involved and no case by case weighing of the burdens or benefits is necessary. Such commands are fundamentally incapable with apartment incompatible with other constitutional system of dual sovereignty miller versus us there can be no there can be no sanction or penalty opposed upon one because he exercised oh pardon me his exercise of constitutional rights social security act of 1935 voluntary Partner interjection family. This is one I really want to hit on and people grasp this family. Again, we continue. Social Security Act of 1935. Voluntary. Look this up, family. And we continue. The Social Security Act, which is part of Title 42 of the United States Code, was enacted in 1935 as a United States government-sponsored voluntary pension program. Now, pardon the interjection, I want to go back to that, and I want this voluntary. Paying taxes is voluntary. Not mandatory, but voluntary. Write that down. Look it up. And we continue. By starting over. The Social Security Act, which is part of Title 42 of the United States Code, was enacted in 1935 as a United States government, pardon me, U.S. government sponsored voluntary pension program for the benefit of individuals who wished to voluntarily participate in the program. It is administrated by the Private Foreign European For-Profit Social Security Administration Corporation. The tax upon which the old age benefits is based is collected by the Eternal Revenue Services under the provisions of Title 26 of the United States Code, otherwise known as the Eternal Revenue Code Policy, IRC in parentheses under quote credit monies in brackets collected by the IRS are not sent to the Social Security Administration to fund their administrative and disbursement activities but rather end up in the general fund along with other taxes collected the fraud against the people is clear wherein the stolen finance is turned over by contracting agents, i.e. the employer, or are allegedly held in a trust fund, in parentheses, pardon me, end quote. The Social Security Act has no provision for a trust fund or insurance. In fact, it would be unconstitutional if it had a trust fund according to Davis versus Boston 89 F2D 368. Even the Supreme Court says there is never a contractual obligation to pay Social Security benefits because no one has a contracted right to benefits. 
Fleming versus Nestor, 363 U.S. 603, i.e., it is not insurance and there is no promise to pay benefits. There is no provision in the United States Constitution for the federal government to be engaged in the insurance business. Although it may be alleged that a so-called trust fund exists, the truth is that it contains no monies or other assets, only governmental IOUs promising to pay money to itself. Social Security is a contract masquerading as an application that people allegedly voluntarily enter into. It is a prima facie evidence, pardon me, it is prima facie evidence that the federal government, inclusive of the alleged Congress, the Eternal Revenue Services Corporation, and the Social Security Administration Corporation, along with the employer slash corporation, are all colluding, conspiring, and warring against the people. Congress does not have the power or authority to tax the people whom they receive compensation from. In doing so, they are engaged in kickbacks, misappropriation of funds, theft, extortion, in short, treason. Pulliam v. Allen, P-U-L-L-I-A-M v. Allen. In 1996, Congress passed a law to overcome the, this ruling which stated that judicial immunity doesn't exist. Citizens can sue judges for prospective injunction relief. Credit, monies in bracket, dispersed by the SSA, must be appropriated by the Congress each year as needed. Since no contractual obligation exists for the payment of any benefits, government has nothing that they can give the people as everything government has comes from the people, even their authority to exist. Technically, the benefits could be terminated at any time if Congress does, did not appropriate the funds. Supreme Court Justice Field, there is no such thing as a power of inherent sovereignty in the government of the United States. In this country, sovereignty resides in the people and Congress can exercise power which they have not by their constitution entrusted to it. All else is withheld. Juilliard versus Greenman, J-U-L-I-A-R-D versus G-R-E-E-M-A-N, 1884. The rights of the people are not derived from governmental agencies, either municipal, state, or federal, or even from the Constitution. They exist inherently in every man by endowment of the Creator and are merely reaffirmed in the Constitution and restricted only to the extent that they have been voluntarily surrendered by the people to the agencies of government. The people's rights are not derived from the government, but the government authority comes from the people. The Constitution, but states again these rights already existing and when legislative encroachment by the nation state or municipality invade these original and permanent rights it is the duty of the courts to so declare and to afford the necessary relief city of dallas et al versus mitchell Men are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Pursuit of happiness and to secure, not grant or create these rights. Governments are instituted. That property which a man has honestly acquired, he retains full control of subject to these limitations first that he shall not use it to his neighbor's injury and that does not mean that he must use it for his neighbor's benefit second that if he devotes it to a public use he gives the public a right to control that use
and there that whatever the public needs require, the public may take it upon payment of due compensation. Bud versus People of State of New York, 1892. As a general rule, men have natural rights to do anything which their inclinations may suggest, if it be not evil in itself and in no way impairs the rights of others. In re Newman, I N space R E space Newman, 1858. Is the Social Security and IRS withholding form an application or a contract? Question. Is the alleged application for the Social Security and or IRS withholding an application or a contract? Note, both an application and a contract by law must be entered into voluntarily with complete knowledge of all contained in the application and or contract. If it is an application which is being applied for, is it a benefit to the people or is it a benefit to the corporation? If it is a contract, what are the terms and conditions of the contract? What is brought to the table by all parties of equal value? And where is the signature of both parties? Or are the alleged contracts and applications both evidence of negotiable instruments which said corporations monetize and trade receiving profits that are not recouped by the people, i.e. the principal. That would be an act of fraud, grand theft, misappropriation of funds and extortion. It violates all the laws of contract but most of all, it violates the public servant's bound, obli bound obligation, obligation to protect the people. In short, treason again. Title 26 of the Internal Revenue Service, Codification of Statutes at Law. Reference to codes, reference to code sections are those found within Title 26 of the United States Code which is a codification of the statutes at large as allegedly enacted by the Congress of the United States. All code sections shown herein are copied directly from Title 26, United States Code, Pre pardon me. Okay, and we continue. I had to check something out. Pardon the interjection. Uh, United States Code, precisely as printed therein. All eternal revenue taxes, including the personal and corporate income taxes, self-employment taxes, as well as the so-called social security tax, are imposed and collected under Title 26, United States Code, also known as the Eternal Revenue Code, IRC, which is unconstitutional. Remember, the Constitution protects, preserves, and secures the birthrights of the people against the infringement by and of all corporations, which also consist of the United States of America, all capital letters, federal and all the states, several states, and Commonwealth government. The Constitution does not protect, secure, or preserve corporations. <laughs> they are fictitious entities. The corporation protects all people, therefore, if any alleged law and or statute in any way attempts to apply to a specific group of people, said alleged law and or statute is null and void, as affirmed in the following stare decisis. The general rule is that an unconstitutional statute, though having the form and name of law is in reality no law 
but is wholly void and ineffective for any purpose, since its unconstitutionality dates from the time of its enactment. In legal complementation, it is, an, it is as inoperative as if it had never been passed. Since an unconstitutional law is void, the general principles follow that it imposes no duties, confers no right, creates no office, bestows no power or authority on anyone, affords no protection, and justifies no acts performed under it. A void act cannot be legally consistent with a valid one. An unconstitutional law cannot operate to supersede any, any existing law. Indeed, insofar as a statute runs counter to the fundamental law of the land, the Constitution, it is superseded thereby. No one is bound to obey an unconstitutional law, and no courts are bound to enforce it. Bonnet v. Valera, V-A-L-L-I-E-R, Norton v. Shelby County, and it just gives case laws. Social Security Tax, Federal Insurance Contribution Act or we know as FICA. Chapter one, chapter 22, subtitle C of IRC. The social security tax is imposed by the code section in chapter 21, subtitle C of the IRC titled Federal Insurance Contributions Act or FICA. Black's Law Dictionary defines contribution as follows. Contribution in the civil law a petition by which the creditors of an insolvent debtor divide among themselves the proceeds of his property proportionally to the amount of their respective credits. Code LA Art 3556 Par 9 Division, which is made among the heirs of the succession of the debts, which the succession is charged according to the appropriation which each is bound to bear. Civ Code LSA Art 1420. Statutes are bonds for public servants slash trustees only. Before the following is examined, it is important to comprehend that statutes are nothing more than bonds that can only be applied to public servants slash trustee who have an obligation to individually maintain a bond. The courts slash government agencies are operating under statute law. A statute is divine, defined in Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition, revised as a kind of bond or obligation of record being an abrasive pardon me and we continue being a abbreviation for statute merchant or statute staple statute merchant defined as a security for a debt acknowledged to be due, entered into before the chief magistrate of some trading town, pursuant to the statute 13 Edward 1, D. Mercatoribus, M-E-R-C-A-T-O-R-I-B-U-S, by which not only the body of the debtor might be imprisoned and his goods seized in satisfaction of the debt, but also his lands might be delivered into the creditor till out of the rents and profits of them the debt be satisfied. This was also called a pocket judgment. Statute Staple A 1353 statute establishing procedure for settling disputes among merchants who traded in staple, staple towns 
The statue helped merchants receive swift judgment for debt. CF statue merchant. Two, a bond for commercial debt. A statue staple gave the lender a possessory right in the land of a debtor who failed to repay a loan. See staple. A popular form of security after 1285 was the staple, statue staple, whereby the borrower the borrower could be by means of a registered contract charge his land and goods without giving up possession. If he failed to pay, the lender became a tenant of the land until satisfied. The borrower under a statue or recognition Oh, pardon me. Recognizance remained in possession. Remain pos possession of his land. Pardon me. I'm trying to look at the computer and read. Stay focused. Pardon the interjection. That we continue. And it later became a common practice under the common law forms of mortgage. Likewise, to allow the mortgager to remain in possession as a tenant at will or at sufferances of the mortgage. J. H. Baker, An Introduction to English Legal History, 354, 3rd edition, 1990. Recognizance, a bond or obligation of record binding a person to some act as to appear in court and subject to forfeit money if obligation is not fulfilled. FIFA, F-I-F-A, equal FIFA, F-I-F-A. Short for the Latin phrase, Fieri Facisas, F-I-E-R-I-F-A-C-I-A-S. Let it be made. Pardon me. <laughs> Just got a call. <laughs> We're going to have to put that on pause during the show. Pardon the interjection and we continue. Let it be made was a court execution to the sheriff to levy on a take of the property of a debtor in order to satisfy judgment. See judgment and execution documents above. The sheriff might typically keep track of FIFAs in a sheriff's FIFA docket book, usually written on a fill in the blank form. A FIFA me a FIFA names the parties to the court judgment and the value of property to be taken to satisfy the judgment. On the back, the sheriff or his deputies annotate their actions in carrying out the order. The fevers were to be returned to the court which ensured them and the actions annotated on the judgment docket. Theoretically, the docket book should concern, contain everything that was noted on the fevers. If I can just get you all thinking again, you would save yourselves. I like to say that again, pardon the interjection. If I just get you all thinking again, you would save yourselves. Prophet Noble Drew Ali. How many of you have experienced know of someone or heard of someone who upon being kidnapped, arrested in brackets, was compelled, advised in brackets, to obtain a bond in order to free themselves from imprisonment by the public servants? Would you say that would you say that said bond is evidence of human trafficking? Partner interjection. Yes. And we continue. It is important to comprehend that courts have repeatedly held that a statute means only that which is stated in the statute and nothing more. 
Sutherland's rules of statutory construction an authoritative legal guidebook under section 66.01 titled strict construction of statutes creating tax liabilities explains the limited application of tax laws the guidebook refers to the united states supreme court decision of gold versus gold g o u LD versus GOULD 245 U.S. 151, which states In the interpretation of statutes, living in taxes, it is the established rule not to extend their provisions by implication beyond the clear import of the language used or to enlarge their operations so as to embrace matters not specifically pointed out. In case of doubt, they are construed most strongly against the government and in favor of the citizens. Pardon the interjection. Can I read, read that one more time? Well, just, just one more time. Thank you. In case of doubt, they are construed most strongly against, against the government and in favor of the citizens. The Supreme Court tells us that IRC sections mean only that which is stated. Nothing else can be added to that which is stated in the code section. With this Supreme Court ruling in mind, look at the wording of sections 3101A and 3111A, which are imposition statutes for the so-called Social Security FICA tax. Section 3101A, applying to applying to employee ease in brackets and 3111A to employers respectively. Capitalizations for emphasis is added to certain phases, phrases, code sections, and court decisions in this article. Black's Law Dictionary defines imposition as follows: imposition, an impost tax contribution imposts taxes duties or impositions levied for diverse reasons or yeah diverse reasons tax to impose a tax to enact or declare that a peculiarity contribution shall be made by the persons liable for the support of government spoken of an individual to be taxed is to be included in an assessment made for purposes of taxation a tax in a general overstanding pardon me they got understanding here of the term and as used in the constitution signifies an exaction for the support of the government the word has never taught to connotate connate connate the expropriation of money from formal group for the benefit of another to make a distinction taxation as affirmed in the American Constitution is for the purpose of tariff and can only apply to goods never flesh and blood people for your references and convenience the following Black's Law second edition defines tariff as Tariff, T A R I F F. A cartel of commerce. A book of rates. A table or catalog, drawn usually in alphabetical order, containing the names of several kinds of merchandise with the duties or customs to be paid for the same, as settled by authority or agreed on between the several parties and states that hold commerce together enc l o n d railway company versus crushman c u s h m a n 92 tex 1000 the list or schedule 
of articles on which a duty is imposed upon their incorporation into the United States with the rates at which they are severely taxed, also the custom or duty payable on such articles, and derivatively the system or principle of imposing duties on the importation of foreign merchandise. Now I'm going to jump ahead, but we're going to come back to this topic because it's wow. Now let's continue right there. Key. Did you notice the use of the word merchandise? Clearly, we are not talking or inferring human beings. That would be human trafficking as well as genocide. Just reviewing a few words referenced clearly affirms that we as Moors cannot be included in the taxation process as we are not and can never be a part of a foreign government. Therefore, we cannot be taxed to support a foreign government. That is clearly unlawful from an international and national perspective. Taxation without representation. We Moors cannot be re presented by a foreign entity. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> what FICA really is. The popular mistaken belief is that the FICA tax, which is imposed on the income of employees under Section 3101A, is a wage tax. However, a reading of Section 3101A shows clearly that the tax is not, in fact, a wage tax, but rather is imposed on income, which is measured by wages. Hence, the FICA tax is simply another income tax. What are wages? What is very important in both these sections is the limited application of the terms wages as defined, as defined in section 3121A and employment as defined, defined in section 3121B. The definitions of these terms create an alleged territorial limitation on the application of the tax as we will see. Remember, inheritance cannot be bought, sold, or transferred, so actually, what territorial location does this reference? Section 3121 states, A. Wages. For purposes of this chapter, the term wages means all remerciance for employment. including the cash value of all, including benefits paid in any medium other than cash, except that such term shall not include. Note that the term wages identifies alleged credit, monies, and brackets paid. In truth, as the United States of America, in all capital letters, corporation is bankrupt. There is no money. End quote. And all debt notes are evidence of a debt owed. Therefore, it is a promise to pay. The people have not been paid for their contractual services and all corporations are in breach of contract as they have not fulfilled their contractual obligations. What is employment? For the activity identified by the term employment, which is defined in section 3121b, the essential part of which is reproduced as follows. Section 3121b, employment. For purposes of this chapter, the term employment means any service of rather nature performed a by an employee for the person employing him irrespective of the citizenship or residence of either. What is residence? Pardon me, what residence is and is not? 
Citizenship and residence denotes a fictitious entity, so that so this is in fact referencing a corporation. Moors cannot be citizens of a British colony. And residence is a word used to trick the people. Res identity. In Black's Law, 4th edition dictionary, res is defined as a thing, an object. So you unknowingly identify yourself as a thing. Residenti. Residenti. One. Within the United States or two, on or in connection with an American vessel or American aircraft under a contract of service which is entered into with the United States in all caps or during the performance of which and while the employee is employed on the vessel or aircraft it touches at a port in the United States. The above, the above affirms that the people have been treasonously converted to fixtures, fictitious entities, property of the United States of America, all capital letters. This is prima facie evidence of treason. We're going to stop right here at 18, and uh, we're going to continue this on another show for part two of Correcting the Position of the IRS by Sister Anna E. L. Like I say, family, don't believe me. Go check it out for yourself, and you'll be amazed at the jewels you'll find on your treasure hunt. The information is out there for us to go search and study. Study, study, study. That's the key. You must study and make it your own. No one else can confess it for you. You have to confess it for yourself. As I say, I love y'all. And as I say, it's always been a pleasure. I am your host, Supreme L, and thank you, thank you, thank you for participating in my show, in our show, because this is your platform. This is not my show. This is your show. I do this for the people. I am charged to uplift fallen humanity along with the rest of my positive Moorish brothers and sisters. I leave you with this. Islam, love, and peace forevermore.